we have Sergio Sala. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, well, first of all, thank you, Johnny. And well, he told already I'm Mexican, so I'm very happy that you guys are here. I uh, hope you, you, you're welcome in my country. I hope you have enough tacos, because I love tacos. I cannot get enough of tacos, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I see that. <laughs> so I'm just going to go quickly. So who am I if, if you don't know me? Uh, Sergio Sala, I'm from Tabasco. Anybody knows Tabasco? You know, like the sauce. I, I, everywhere, everywhere I travel, I had to say, you know, like the sauce. Ah, oh, the sauce. So fun fact, it's not from Tabasco, the sauce. <laughs> it's from the States, of course. States doing everything. They're taking our name. Anyway. Uh, so I, okay, I'm going to tell this the story quickly. So this is the stats. I don't, I don't like to say numbers, but I mean, yeah, live in 15 cities. So what I call live is stay more than one month. I've been traveling more than 100 cities and visited more than 40 countries all around the world by six years. Um, and I'm, I've been doing this because I'm a solopreneur. And I love this term because this is what I aim for and I want to help people do the same. The thing is that the usual businesses, it's about, you know, having more and more, like more clients, uh, more, uh, more staff. And the thing is that adding more is not always the, it's not always the smartest thing. It's, it's the easiest way to say, you know, we, need to, we, sh we should add more and more and more. And that's not always the case. Because solopreneur, like me, question growth and find different ways to make it forward, like without spending too much time, without spending too much money or getting more staff, finding a better way to make business. And there are many ways, many types of solopreneurs. So, I mean, this is what I love about the internet. It helps us like create this new type of, of work. So like bloggers, YouTubers, freelancers, creative, and even small businesses or any business, if they think, how can they just not only think about growth, but just think of how can you go forward in a smarter way, you can be a solopreneur. And this is what I like about it. It's, uh, I heard uh, there's a guy who said that uh, we, we build companies of one. And when I heard that term, it was like, I, lo I love that. Like, we're companies of one. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit of my story quickly. Anybody knows this? I, saw some I heard some laughs over there. So this is the reason that I'm here, you know? <laughs> it's, it's very interesting. So when I was 14 years old, I used to play that game. This is me, like, luckily someone shot it. Uh, and I loved it so much that after school, I play and play all the time. And I don't know, I did what any 14 years old did at that time. Learn to code. Of course not. But uh, <laughs> I created my first website. I mean, it's not the best one, but I'm proud of it. And I'm also lucky that I saved it. I don't know somehow. Like, it's like 14, maybe more. Yeah, 15, 16 years old, that website. So it's, it's been a long time. Uh, but that took me to, to create a lot of websites. It was nice to, to, to create community. The thing is that um, I had to choose a career and I studied architecture. Some people were surprised, like from, from high school, they thought I was going to be like a programmer or something like that. But what I wanted exactly is to be like create and have a sense of community. So architecture was, was the option for me. Also because graphic designer like, is to be poor, you know. So, uh, I, I studied that, I uh, went to Italy, it was amazing times. I, it, was, it was the time when the, the travel bot beat me because I was gonna stay six months, but I stayed a year and a half, so it was freaking amazing. Uh, fast forward, I came back to, to, to Mexico, finished the career, and a friend of mine invited me to start a studio, a web uh, architect studio, and I was gonna be an architect. That was, that was, the, what, what, I was what I wanted to do. The thing is that, it didn't go well. Uh, we tried for a year, and it failed. But I, I created this website. I created the website for my studio, and I was like, hmm, what if I, what if I don't become a freelancer, right? So I was like, ah. After all these years, I've been doing this as a hobby. Why, why don't I try to be one? And of course, I started like almost everyone, you know? Well, so we started with Upwork, with Fiverr, and tried to get something out of it. And using those platforms, like, I just want to throw the laptop. I was like, this is not my thing. Uh, <laughs> I, 
So what happened later, well, I took several courses. I learned more how to position myself as an expert. And one of the key points was meeting these two guys from, from Mexico City. I was going to invite Andrea here, but she couldn't. She's already too busy. Because she hired me, Andrea, uh, to create her website like four years ago. And it was this result. And it was amazing. Uh, it didn't feel like, uh, like a proper client. I mean, we we're friends, but we work so well. Of course, I get paid very well, too. And I realized that that was my niche. And I enjoy working with that. So I just focus on those type of clients, like online entrepreneurs who have uh, courses and digital products. And that took me to have more and more Clients, this girl, Sonia Sanchez, also from Mexico City, like author of three books. I think she's writing her fourth now. This guy, David Cantone, who's, it, this was also old one. Now he has one million followers in YouTube. And all this time, I was realizing that people were hiring me for a reason. So there's this guy, um, Matias Salom from Argentina. This is an interview, but uh, the, one thing that he said in this interview, like, your work shows a distinctive brand that people respect. And I was like, huh, I think I'm getting into something. That's how I uh, got even more better clients. This is one of my favorites. It's Hiber Becerra. He's the personal trainer of the national Mexican team. So it was, we, we, we built his personal website about a uh, personal trainer. So it was pretty cool. And I got invited, like, this is another guy, Angel Viral Maximo. He, he invited me to his events in Madrid and all these crazy people. It's, it's, it's been a lot of fun. But I realized, like, all this time, oh, sorry. So, um, to, to put some, some numbers, so this is what I usually charge, like, even per month. So I'm getting around three to five per project. But I do more, like, I do maintenance to all of them, to so like 400 of retainer. Plus on coaching, because a lot of people also ask me like how, how to build and I don't have the time, so I just help them to start. So yeah, how, how do I get all these clients? I, I realized, as I said, the, the guy, Matias, alone from Argentina, that uh, people value my work. And the thing is that we're not used to sell, you know? Uh, not even the people who always sell in there, it's, it's not comfortable. It's... it's um, the thing is that we're, we, we, don't put, we, we don't have a confidence to put a price to our work. And this is a, a problem that I see for all solopreneurs. This is why we usually end up on websites like Upwork. Because we, we, we prefer someone to put the price rather than us, right? And also because we see all this type of marketing, the shady marketing that I see. And uh, we think that oh, I should market my things, and I, I don't want to do the shady way. And as I said there, it's like, it's not good or evil, it's just a way to communicate. Oh, she, she wanted to screen that show, sorry. <laughs> so, um, the thing is that I believe later, I realized that there's a different way, and this is what I call the trust marketing. When I, when I saw that, I saw, I saw it from one course, of course, I learned that, and I realized that this is, this is the way that I've been working. Trust marketing, the thing is that you can do all these shady ways and you can always bring money back, but the trust is the hardest thing to, to, to bring it back. So whatever you do, whatever you do, always keep the trust. I think, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, and then when you, do the, when, when you do trust marketing, all the sales like happen eventually. So how, how, how do you use... Sorry, do you guys hear me? I, I feel like, okay. That's why I was so sorry. Okay, so the, the trust has to be part of your brand. So how, how do you, uh, your, your online brand, and then your authority, like the expertise, like how, how the, the way they, they, you position yourself, and of course, like any solution, courses, guys, whatever you, you're trying to sell. And also, along with trust, empathy is key. Uh, you got to know like, what, what are these audience struggles, which we're going to talk about in a bit. And at the end, trust marketing is that. Like, if you build trust and you have empathy with your subscribers, through the content you're going to share, you, you're, you're going to have better clients. Oh, yeah, now I hear better. Better clients and uh, better products, which, which I'm going to talk about. So, <laughs> I love this comic. Uh, 
when I was a freelancer, like, um, I realized that I, I felt alone. I was the only one doing this like four, four or five years ago. So I decided to create my own blog and I did it with the trust marketing process. It's been changed a lot now. This is the, the current website. But uh, it's, it, so I started writing, as I said, like all these articles that were very honest and raw, like oh, this is the pros and cons. So people, uh, every, every content that I, said, like, that I wrote, they knew that I was gonna say the good and the bad things. For example, this one, like, no one care about your travel. This is just bashing all the travel bloggers. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, right? Uh, also, this is one of my favorites, an uh, ergonomic way to work, because we usually, when we're on the laptop, we're like that, and we should have, like, a stand. Should have put the image. But, yeah, everyone needs to have the, the stand so we can work properly. So people like that. And I, I roll, 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 like, for many years. Maybe my mom was the only one reading at, at the beginning, but it took a long, long, long time. That, uh, so yeah, on, on, on the title of my talk, it says that I had 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. If anybody check my YouTube, it's not like that. This is a screenshot. I have 3,000 3, right now. But in reality, I have 10,000 email subscribers. Oh, oh see that? <laughs> and that's the key. And that's what I'm gonna talk about in, in a bit. Like, it's not about how many followers on Instagram or YouTube. It's about subscribers. This is the best way to, to reach your, con your audience through trust marketing. This, this newsletter I've been writing for so many years and people love it. Like, they're so excited to, to read my uh, articles every week. There's all these comments. They're all, all in Spanish. But I get all these comments all the time. Like, uh, uh, yeah, it's possible to be a digital nomad. You're very direct. I like that. I like your minimalist way of traveling. Like, because I, I show all, everything, everything. You know, they know all my life better than me. That led me to uh, make some meetups. This is in Mexico City. I've been doing a lot of conferences. This one also. This one was in DNX Buenos Aires. There was a Spanish version, if you didn't know, but the DNX digital nomads. Uh, my cool people, Peter Levels, the uh, creator of Nomad List. I guess everyone knows him. And through all this content also, I've been adding more uh, income. So products, I'm selling two to three K. Affiliate, like only recommending what I, what I share. Sponsors, which is a new thing that I'm gonna also talk about at the end. And this is the graph of uh, I think people want to know that, you know, how much money this guy's making. Uh, <laughs> basically, most of them is web design because this is what I, what I do a lot. And the second one, biggest one, is products. And this is what I'm going to start doing more because I love that. And when people ask me, well, what, what should you do? Like, should you do services or products? I always say that if you're starting, you, sh you should do services, right? And then move to products because it's... It's, it's a smarter way, and as a web design, it's cool that just let me do any other projects that I want. So I can still try and test new stuff, but I still have these clients that I work with. So that's what I said, like, I believe in products. I believe so much in them uh, that I believe everyone, if you're doing freelance, you should slowly, slowly change to products. And this is exactly what we're gonna talk about. How do I work the trust marketing uh, through my content? what I call the solopreneur framework. What we're gonna do is to create an empathy-based audience and earn an income with ethical products. So remember, always you gotta, you gotta make people trust what, what you're doing. So this is the trust marketing is the core of everything, and this is gonna be the whole process. We're gonna go quickly. So we're gonna start with audience, right? I mean, I think most of you guys know, but you shouldn't market everyone. Like you should market the, the, the people you're aiming for. And for me, well, I was a digital nomad all, all this life. So I was trying to find people that were just like me. So my content has been always specified only to digital nomads. Because when you, f when you market to the people that you know, it's gonna be easier. If you know where they are, you know how to reach them, it's also gonna be easier. And you will know their pains and motivations. You will know what, what, what they struggle. You will know what they want. 
<laughs> so some, some laughs there. I love GIF, by the way, as you can see. <laughs> um, if you don't know what they want, one of the key, key advices that I will give you is that when you start building your audience, you got to ask them. So I have this autoresponder that I, everyone that signs up, they're, they're, send, they're sending these, and there's this question that I make in the middle that says, so what are you struggling with now? And you, it's amazing, like I get all these answers, like so many, all the time, all the time. And I, I understand what they want, so it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, so your audience will, will be two, in two parts. The non-buyers and buyers, they're both as important because the non-buyers are the ones that are like, oh, they, they know who you are, like they know Sergio, so, but they're a little bit skeptical to buy your stuff. And, uh, but they're like over there, almost there, clo close to buy what you want. And even the buyers, that uh, they will keep buying whatever you want if you actually make good, good products, right? So you have to have voting in your... Um, you, 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 get, you, you gotta take care of both, that's what I'm trying to say. Then the playground. So how do you get these subscribers, right? Email is not dead, so, so a lot of people think that. As I see, like with the 10,000 10, subscribers, it's working a lot, like all my revenue of products, they come from there. Like it, I'm not selling every week, but I try to make it constant. And, uh, well, just quickly, there's so many email providers, doesn't matter which one, but I do recommend these two. I use MailChimp. I'm looking through ConvertKey because I know uh, Nate and Barry. So maybe it'll change, but doesn't matter. So your newsletter has to be in your own playground, if you didn't know what I meant by playground. Because we have Facebook, Instagram, all these things. So the problem is they have their own rules, you know? Like, if you need to reach someone in Facebook, it's only 5%, you gotta pay more, blah, 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 blah. When you, on your own website, you don't, like, you, you can reach them without any problem. And yeah, so many options. I use WordPress with Genesis, Ghost. I also know John O'Nolan, the, the owner. So I recommend any of these options. Uh, and then just gonna go quickly, what, what do you need in this website? So design, I'm a designer, so I try to make it nice. But it's not that important. So design at the end, it's about how you communicate with, with, with uh, the audience that you want. And part of it is the content. So my website, this part where it says, I'm going to translate this slogan as travel the world and be your own boss. It's not an impossible dream. I do it, and I can help you do it. And that just took me like, like a long, long time to, to create this slogan. It was a lot of iterations. and. It's just that important because when people go to that website, they see the slogan, oh, this is for me. I mean, for the people there, digital number, the other ones that they're not, so I'm filtered, filtered, in, filtered them out, right? And the website that you have, they, like, that's the whole idea to turn it into a subscriber because when someone watches your website, it's like the, the span of attention is quickly. So you gotta capture them quickly, right? Because they, they go to your website and then suddenly there's a pop-up from Facebook and they just go there and they forgot about your website. So the idea is to try to always uh, put it on your email because they're, when they're in their email, they're non-buyers because they're already checking what you want and then you want to turn it into buyers. SEO, everyone knows what's SEO, right? Everyone? Okay, a few. So SEO, search shine, engine optimization. Uh, you know, it's not complicated. You just gotta put a, a proper title tag, description. That's the only thing that you need. She's nodding. <laughs> uh, so, just gonna give you an example. So, people who search how to uh, be a young entrepreneur, which is a common search in Google. So, I'm, I'm, I'm the first one over there. And I didn't do anything. I just, as I said, I just put a good title that is like exactly what they're searching for and my website shows up the, at the first one. And so this is the graph of how do I get people, and as you can see, 92% it's organic search, so it's Google, Google is crazy. And if you wanna know more stats, more geek stuff, so this is the, the, just this year, uh, so around 30,000 views per month, so it's, uh, it's a lot of people. Uh, and what I do, for example, at the end of that article of the how to be a uh, young entrepreneur, you know, I put it like this big, 
uh, form at the end. So like, hey, you, you reached the end. So if you like the article, just give me your email, right? So I'm always trying to capture anyone who, who, who shows up in the radio. Because you need to, like, if you're new, not, not everyone will, will listen what, what you're doing. You got to outreach, and you always be clever in the way you do it. What I call this technique, to call the lasso technique. So all the time you, you, you've you been interviewing a podcast or, 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 or you guys talking to each other, and then you say, hey, but I have my, I uh, just go to my website slash sign up, and you, you can be a subscriber, right? So you had to have, like, a call to action all the time, like be prepared whenever someone wants to know about your stuff. And what I do, they have a, a landing page specify only to say, uh, like, what is the reason to subscribe to, to the newsletter? Like, these real tweets, too, they say, oh, I love your, your newsletter. And, of course, like, the big bottom at the end says subscribe, and how many subscribers were there. So just know that there's people, in the, the, he's not the only one, no? And now we can talk a little bit about social media. It's just going to go quick, so it's not that important. But if you have Instagram, just send them, again, send them to your own website. So I use Linktree. And, and there's a huge button that sends them straight again to the landing page, right? And so now that you have these people, you gotta, you got to create content. And what I love about content going again to the trust marketing, it's, it's, it's the key. Uh, so why, why do you think we have all these bloggers, YouTubers, or entrepreneurs creating content? It's because they're trying to put trust on you. And... One of the best ways is teaching. When you teach, when you create content, you build this trust and expertise like, like nothing else. Um, so there are three ways. The, the written content, which is more expressive, which I like, conversational. I don't like to talk too much. <laughs> so I'm not, not into podcasts, but that's the option. And personal is more video, which I'm enjoying right now, which is going to talk about that in a bit. They're different, like, you can take them all three or you can go by one. For me, I started uh, as a written content because blogging was the best way for me to express what I, what I was going through, all these challenges about being a digital nomad. And uh, writing, writing was amazing. I'm still doing it because all this time, for like these five years, couple of five years, writing, writing, people started to trust me. And I get this authority that now uh, I'm kind of the, the, good, the good ones uh, in the Spanish community. So if you search for digital nomads in Spanish, my name will be there. So what content, right? Like there's so many things. So what, I've been writing a lot of stuff and, and just going to give you these two keys that I love. Like anything that you write, any content, YouTube or, or, or written or podcast, you always have to have like a call to action. And so people see your content and they, they find a way, oh, I want to do something after that, right? It's not only about bragging what you do, but always giving them something that they can use after. And always, like, if there's any problem, a common problem, as I say, when I have all these surveys, I know what problems they're struggling with, so I try to make that type of content. And, yeah, create it, of course, in a way that, 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 that you do. And this is what I love, like, so the YouTube channel has only been one year, so I think for, what, for a year, 3,000 subscribers, it's... It's a good number, but I did it because uh, I became a YouTuber, even my mom doesn't like, like that, uh, because it's, it's a different way to express yourself instead of writing. Like, so I have all these uh, you know, effects and people are enjoying all these weird things that I do, and I realized that written is, is not easy to do all these things. So I decided to, to create more creative stuff through videos. So you need to have a consistent plan. You need to create, 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 because as you can see there, like that's so many articles. It's been like five years, so it's like 120 something articles right now. I don't know. It's been, been a long time. Uh, and yeah, your mom will be the only one at the beginning. <laughs> but you gotta hustle. Like it takes a long time. It takes a lot, a lot of time. Like anything, blog, podcast, whatever you're creating, it just takes a lot, a lot of time. It for me, as I said, it took two years to like finally start to get like some conference invitations and all that stuff. 
Uh, also the YouTube, which is like only one year, but you can see all these videos that I made, like so many right now. I'm, I'm even surprised to see so many. I don't, I don't know how the, do I did it. Uh, so the key, it's, uh, so if you're going to create content, you always have to plan ahead. Like anything happened, for example, I still do web design, so maybe I'm too busy and like I will not have time the next month. So I always try to have a batch of a lot of content, so just in case I don't have time. And what, what, one app that I use and, and I love is called Notion, which if you guys don't know, I freaking love this app. It's kind of new, it's been like two years, something like that, that it's been there, San Francisco based. So I put everything there, like even my life, I mean, it's, it's, it's not only about a calendar, it does many things, but one of the great things is that, like, so I schedule everything in advance, try to create it before, and for example, you can see that, the, so there's like tag options, I create a script, I mean, we can talk, if anybody wants to talk about YouTube videos, we can talk that after, uh, like the whole process. But yeah, so I have everything, everything planned. And so we, we got this question the other day, so like how, how many times do you have to publish? And there's not a right or wrong answer, but at least you have to stay relevant, meaning that there's so many people creating content right now that uh, the only key is that don't let your audience forget you. Like if, if you publish once a week, so okay, people will expect something from you once a week. If you publish a month, like once a month, okay. But if you publish like once seven months or one year, like they, of course they're gonna forget you, right? So just, there, there's, there's not, not, not a precise time, you just always try them to not forget you. And I'm telling you all these things because as I said, creating content, create trust, but it's also a, the best way to, to sell. And if you do it well, like, the teaching does it for itself, which is crazy. Like, I, I don't have to, to create all these big marketing, not even pay Facebook, I don't pay anything, I use only my newsletter, and I say, hey guys, I have this course, and boom, I got all these sales, right? Because now we're gonna talk the last part of, about products. So what can you sell? Like there's so many options. Courses, guys, products, you say it, right? And I'm just, just gonna go through to one of my, the best ones that I, that I got in, which is the manual of digital nomads because that's what people ask a lot. And I knew what they wanted because I was gathering data from them. And one thing that I do, another advice that I can give you is that uh, if you have your own playground, your website, just put another page where you're gonna show like, hey, like if you, if you wanna do, if you wanna know like uh, the next course that I might, I might do, like w will you be able to answer some questions? And that's what I do. So there, I, ha I had this, this website where I just sent it to Typeform and I asked three questions like, why do you want to be a digital nomad? What do you wanna know about online businesses? And give me your email, because I was capturing them if they were not on, <laughs> on my email. And again, this one was, was amazing because I got 3,000, almost 3,000 uh, responses and it took me a lot of time to read them all, a lot, a lot of time. But it was nice because I realized what they wanted. And yeah, I, I, I translated those needs into product. I created this uh, guide that it's, it's been selling well and um, Another key that I will give you is that even before, like, there's a lot of people that think that you should create the product before the audience, and it has to be the other way around, because the audience will tell you what you're gonna sell. And what I did, like, I created a, a beta test, like, I only said to, to a few people, like, hey, if you wanna buy it, I'm gonna give you a 50% discount, and, um, but I just let you know, talking about trust, let you know this is not a complete uh, product, so, but you're gonna get this discount, but we're gonna make it work. So just realize, so I realize if people are actually gonna sell, uh, buy it because you're gonna have whatever subscribers, and you see that in Instagram or YouTube a lot, like you might have, let's say a million followers and only 10 will buy whatever you, you're trying to sell, right? So it's always nice to test it before you actually start building the whole content. And when you do, you gotta go, go small. 
Because as I said, we're solopreneurs, like we don't have like all this team to create these products, so you gotta go step by step. What I did, going back to Notion, what I love, I love this app, it's, I just created this, uh, it's a link, I just sent it a link. Instead of going the whole process of PDF and, and doing that complex, like Notion lets you do like very quick uh, books, and so I had like interviews, um, and what I love about it, it's that instant, uh, changes. So if I change anything right now, people will see it instantly. So it's pretty cool. And it lets me work slow, uh, slowly, slowly to, to create even more content to them. Because uh, whatever you're launching, it will not be the first time. Like uh, the same product, you should always iterate it, make it better, better, better. And also whatever you're going to say, like you're always going to be launching, launching, launching. You're gonna get used to that too, and now you're gonna realize through trust marketing that it's not that easy, that hard. I'm sorry, to sell when you have people that actually trust what, what you what you're sharing. If you are on YouTube, uh, there's also not not a good number, but I love the the future on the 1,000. So you have the monetization program, but this is like the end card at the end, which I love because I've been showing some videos, and at the end, so there's this click, you know. Oh, go, go, go to the, the guy that I have. And this also has brought me a lot of new buyers. And just going to go quickly to one of the other options that you can do as an entrepreneur when you create your own audience. Affiliates, it's so easy. I created this, this website, what I just shared. Because I'm a minimalist, so I count everything that I have. <laughs> and I recommend it too. So at the end of uh, every newsletter, I'll say, hey, you want to know what I have? Just go to this link. And they go through there, and there's Amazon, so I get a commission all the time. Also, not only products, uh, uh, also online, digital goods, for example. There's whatever you guys are using. I use Flywheel as my web hosting service. They have a referral program. Like most of them, all of them have, not all of them, but most of them have referral program that you can just sign up and recommend it because you're actually using those those things. And this is like the last thing that I've been trying to do right now because I have like a YouTube channel and it's a, I'm still understanding how does the sponsor work. But first, I got to thank the guys at uh, uh, Safety Wing because they, they were the first that trusted my, my authority. And uh, yeah, I'm doing a little bit of sponsor with them. They're, they are here. And this is also for photographers, big design. Which are, this is a very expensive uh, tripod. They're, they're still building it. And I mean, they don't know me. I just send an email. I just send a quick email like, hey, uh, this is in English, of course. And I even said, like, of course, I, I can pay for it. Like, if just send me one before everyone else can I need it. <laughs> and uh, I just got an email back saying that, you know how to pay. We're going to give it to you. And uh, yeah, we're just going to see what, where you're posting. So th the advice here is like, uh, just write an email to any company that, that, that you think will believe in you and they see that you have an authority. So hopefully we'll get it soon because I'm still waiting for that. Uh, and there's Alina Rotary, which the guys are here too. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, I, the numbers, they're not that big, but they, they saw that I have this authority as a digital nomad in Spanish. So I was accepted to be part of the road trip, which has been pretty nice. Uh, so yeah, just gonna go, go quickly, quickly, so we can just rewind what, we, what, what you guys learned here. So in order to sell any product, you have to have some, something that people will need. To need something from you, they need to trust your expertise. To trust your expertise, they need to be consistently giving value and teaching from you. To give consistent, consistent value, you need a consistent content plan. And to have a consistent plan, you need subscribers that are going to consume what, you, what you're having. To have a subscribers, you need a website that is converting these people. To have a website, you, know, you need visitors. But to have visitors, you need to reach them where they're currently spending the time. And where are they spending the time? Well, you got to know who they are. And to know who they are, you got to be part of their group. And this is the whole process. It goes always from, like, if you want to sell something, you got to figure out your audience in the whole process that I show you. And yeah, forget about whatever numbers you, you have. It's always about your audience, I'm telling you. 
it's crazy how easy it is to, to sell when you have your own small audience. And when you're selling like great, great things that people trust, you're going to sell more and more, and you're going to have a lot of great income. Yeah, thank you, guys. This is... Johnny. All right. So we still, we still have a little bit of time. There's a small, quick surprise. So one, one more thing. I feel like Steve Jobs, you know? <laughs> one more thing. No, no. So I, I have this content that I've been doing in Spanish, and I'm finally going to post in English. And uh, I'm going to show you just a very quick trailer. So talking about trust marketing, I'm going to tell you in advance that it's still... It's a video that I'm still working on. It's not complete, but it's nice to show you here. You're the first ones you're gonna see. It's just two minutes, so you're not gonna get bored. Uh, let's put it just quickly and see if it works. Can we play it? Hi, I'm Sergio Sala, and for the last six years, I work as a web designer helping clients from all over the world improve their branding and get more online sales. I have a location independent lifestyle as my work is completely online and so far I have lived in more than 15 cities, traveled to more than 100 cities and 50 countries. As I fell alone in this journey I started a blog where I share all the challenges of being a digital nomad and through the years they have led me to speaking conferences, meet amazing people and have unique experiences. All my content has been shared in Spanish but today, finally, I will start posting everything in English. You see, we need like a universal language and whether we like it or not, English is the way so this is the right time to start posting in English. You see, I have three values in life, community, service and creativity and being a creative digital nomad just fits them all. And as I truly love helping and inspire other people to do the same as me, in this YouTube channel, I'm gonna show you everything about this lifestyle, the good and the bad, like reviews of CDs, like the perks of being a minimalist, tactics for better productivity, struggles of working online, and some adventures along the way. My aim for you is to learn, get inspired, declutter your life, and finally become a citizen of the world. Guys, we live in amazing times. All we need is a computer to generate income online and live anywhere. In fact, let's just take the computer and move it. How easy was that, right? I'm gonna post a lot of cool content soon, so please don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And yeah, see you in the road, my friend. All right, that's it. Well, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah. So there are so many nomad blogs out there, especially in English. Um, how do you make sure that you stay competitive and that your content is really unique and interesting to people and you stand among across like? Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's a good question too. <laughs> that I get get a, a, asked a lot. <laughs> I believe I don't want to be that. Um, I want to be modest. Like I believe I can make it better than that many of the there right now. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Like, I have a big camera, you know? <laughs> um, I know it's going to be hard, too, because, well, as I said, I still have the web design and the, and the products, so I'm going to be fine for a while. But I believe that I have something to say that it's way different than the others. Like, this video that I show you, well, I'm still working on it because the Selena thing took me a lot of time, so I did this, like, in the morning, literally. <laughs> Uh, so I'm still going to make a few changes. I'm going to make it better, better, uh, because it's the trailer that people, a lot of people are going to see. But uh, if you see my content right now and the one that I'm going to publish, subscribe to the channel, please. Uh, <laughs> it will be very, very nice. I think I, I, I'm a creative at the end, and I've been doing a lot of things. that uh, as, I'm an architect. I'm a web designer, a writer, a YouTuber. So I think I'm going to do things so much better than others. I, ho I hope so. But let's see what, what happens at the end. Thank you. Good question. Okay. Hi, um, I know that like being a solopreneur can take a lot of discipline into your daily schedule. So my question is about like what's your daily schedule and how much time you dedicate to see the content of other people to get inspired for your for your own content. Thank so many good questions. <laughs> uh, well, that's also hard. Like 
being a being a productive guy in this world that there's a lot of constant constant distraction is hard. It's, it's really really hard. But it's taking me like a lot of frameworks. So, you know, I use this app Notion to track everything. This, <laughs> it's a good question because it's hard to answer. <laughs> but uh, but I, I try to have like a schedule. I had to have like so this day I'm gonna work with clients. These days I'm gonna do these. Like I, I work in the weekend right now too. So uh, every day I'm working, but I'm enjoying it. So I try to schedule this, this, and this, and always uh, accept that there's going to be changes. You know, you, you never know, especially as a nomad when you travel a lot. And I do slow travel, so I stay in a place for one or even three months as much as I can. So and I, I don't have a rush to know the city or wherever I'm going. So I stay, get a co-working and work, hustle half of the day and try to do something else at the end. But it's, it's a lot of commitment and... To have goals, well, I mean, it's 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 a yeah, it's a long, long answer. But I have like monthly goal review goals, like uh, quarterly, and then for three months and a year, and I have like my life goals that I'm checking all the time. I made a video in English. I will make sorry in Spanish. But I will make one in English one day about the whole process that I have about being productive. But to to be honest, like it hasn't been that good. But I'm working on it. Hi there. I'm just wondering what your strategy is for managing a bilingual audience, or more than that, specifically one audience which speaks Spanish and another audience which speaks English. Like, how are you going to implement that on a logistical level? Nice. Uh, this is also something I've been thinking about. So the YouTube channel, I didn't decide to do both languages because, you know, if I make a, like a travel one, it's not easy just to replicate this, the same thing. There's a girl called Robana. She has millions of followers, and she has Spanish and English. And I asked her, and she said, it's a lot of work like, to do the same thing twice. I said, no, that's not my thing. So I separated the thing. So the, the newsletter is writing, so I'm used to that now. So that's a whole different concept than making videos. So it's cool that I have them separated. So I'm going to make just videos in English. And the, English, the Spanish content, I have already, like, at least for two, three months of content. So they're very different formats that helped me to separate them.